Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We are given that f of x minus y equals f of x minus f of y and let f be a continuous function. If you want it to be differentiable, we can make it differentiable as well. But anyways, we are given f of 2 equals 5 and we are supposed to evaluate f of 16. I'll be presenting two methods. Here's the first one. For our first method, I'm going to manipulate this um, functional equation in normal ways. So when you are given a function equation, you check for specific values, such as x equals 0, y equals 0, x equals y, y equals 2x, so on and so forth. So you can do so many things with this equation. And of course, we're given a particular value as well. So that's going to fix our function. Uh, you know, we're going to have a function without a constant, uh, like f of x equals um, a to the power x. Instead of that, we're going to have something to the power x, for example, right? Okay, let's see how this works. I'm going to first replace, um, well, actually, that's not called replacing. Maybe it is called replacing. I don't know. I'm going to set y equals x everywhere. So if you re set y equals x or replace y with x, you're going to get f of 0 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you're going to get something real nice, f of x minus f of x. And f of x minus f of x is always 0. Therefore, from here, we get that f of 0 is equal to 0. Now, could you get this in a different way? Could you replace x and y both with 0? You're going to get f of 0 minus 0 equals f of 0 minus f of 0. Yes, that would also give you f of 0 equals 0. Obviously, there's more than one way to get this. So we know, we know that f of 0 is equal to 0. That's good. Okay, so we're going to look for more values. How about replacing x with 0 but doing nothing for y? This is going to uh, give us an interesting result as well. So if you replace x with 0, you're going to get f of negative y. 0 minus y is negative y. On the right-hand side, you're going to get f of 0 minus f of y. Notice that we do know from the previous step that f of 0 is equal to 0. So this gives us f of negative y equals negative f of y. Now, this is an important result, and this is true for all real values of y. By the way, I forgot to mention that y is defined over real numbers. So if this is a true statement for all y values, then this means that f is an odd function. Great. Odd functions are interesting because they're odd. All right, great. So now, what am I going to do next? Well, I know that f is odd and f of 0 is equal to 0, but I do need more information. So let's go ahead and replace y with negative y now. So that's going to be kind of interesting. If you replace y with negative y, you're going to get f of x minus negative y, which is f of x plus y. And then that is going to give me f of x minus f of negative y. But remember, uh, y is an odd function, so f of negative y is the opposite of f of y, uh, or, yeah, or negative f of y. So this is going to give you f of x plus y equals f of x plus f of y. And this is the well-known Cauchy, uh, Cauchy equation, and you should know that f of x can be written as mx from here. And you can verify this with f of 0. For example, if you replace x with 0, you're going to get f of 0 equals 0. If you replace x with uh, negative x, you're going to get obviously the opposite of f of x. So that also shows this is an odd function since x to the power 1 is odd power. That also shows this is an odd function. Now, we do know that f of 2 is equal to 5 and f of 2 is basically 2m. So 2m is equal to 5, which means m is equal to 5 halves. From here, we can write f of x as 5 halves times x. So this gives us f of x. We found the solution, a particular solution. And from here, we can basically evaluate f of 16. This is what we're trying to find. And f of 16 just becomes uh, 5 times 8, which is equal to 40. So that's going to be the solution we are looking for. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. My second method is actually different because I'm not interested in finding a general expression for f, but more like I'm, f I'm interested in finding numerical value. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace x with 4 and y with 2. And again, let's remember our original expression, f of x minus y is f of x minus f of y. By the way, since you know that from the first method, f of x plus y can be written as f of x plus f of y, you can also use that. But I'd like to use the original one. So here, I'm going to replace x with 4 and y with 2. That's going to give me f of 4 minus 2, which is f of 2, equals f of 4 minus f of 2. This means that f of 4 equals 
to f of 2. And since I know that f of 2 is equal to 5, from here I'm getting f of 4 equals 10. Great. You probably know the next step. I'm going to replace x with 8 and y with 4. So in other words, I'm just trying to double everything, right? So this is what I'm getting from there. And now notice that this is f of 4 equals f of 8 minus f of 4. And this means that f of 8 is equal to 2 times f of 4. And you can definitely generalize this uh, for integers, for powers of 2, for pretty much any you know, rational number, so on and so forth. But that's not our point. From here, we get that f of 8 is equal to 2 times 10, which is 20. And finally, I'm going to replace x with 16 and y with 8. And that is going to give me f of 16 minus 8, which is f of 8, equals f of 16 minus f of 8. And this means f of 16 can be written as 2 times f of 8. And f of 8 is equal to 20. Therefore, f of 16 is going to be 40. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.